Harry's wife. TV does not lie. We go to an article in the Times written by Camilla Long. It demonstrates the comparison of the way that Harry comes across in his book compared to that on television and how Camilla Long sees through this. Harry, you can't have a ghostwriter for television. It doesn't lie. Which, of course, somewhat sets the tone with regard to how the ghostwriter's involvement is seen and how the book is also being viewed by Camilla Long. You can see, of course, is what Camilla Long writes, what they were driving at. A full bore, full gloss, full glamour, Late night, old school, slapped tits, high, powered series of in your face, king of our hearts, splashy global tete tets. The tone would be to paraphrase one of his more toadying interviewers Harry, you're the most famous man in the world. But all the fruffing, all the excitement, all the preening, Atlantic, it want Harry and great on television. In fact, he is awful. Titanically, implacably, strangely, pallidly, clamorly awful. Who was this strange moth-eaten specimen on all our channels with the thinning sprig of tartan hair? He looked washed up, exhausted, Eyes red-rimmed, as if he had been crying for days. Perhaps he had. Now, just pausing there, of course, his appearance is interesting. I commented the same, that he didn't look happy, that he looked exhausted. Of course, some of this may be the product of his alleged drug use, and admitted drug use. But it also may well be as a consequence of the fact that he's ground down which would be no surprise given that he's in the sustained day evaluation from his narcissist wife. The appearance, of course, picked up on here by Camilla Long, also contradicts those that suggest that they're so happy, they're so in love, everything's wonderful in Monty Shitshow. It's clearly not. Harry's appearance, whereby he's aggressive, irritable, and he just doesn't look happy. That, of course, is commensurate with someone who may well be labouring under the use of drugs and is certainly the case that he's being devalued by his wife. I have come across this repeatedly with regard to those who've been affected by the behaviour of narcissists. Returning to Camilla Long's article, as for what he said, well, in another world, no one with this lack of humour or this dowdy, unoriginal way of expressing things, someone this unable to come up with his own ideas, would be allowed anywhere near primetime television. That, I guess, is royalty for you. The Panzer attack to promote his bug began on Sunday with a 90-minute interview with Tom Bradby. I must confess to already feeling drained by it all. Bradby have similarly looked like some fading duchess in a Marlborough tea room who had suddenly decided to cross-dress as a financial advisor. Harry reminded me instantly of Prince Philip if the Duke had talked like a Peloton instructor. At one point he said, forgiveness is 100% a possibility. Both sat almost hunched, as if on camping chairs, in a room, perhaps in a provincial golf club, where the bizarre hint of Arabia Curtain said, no one actually lives here. To say that Bradby let every single one of Harry's balls sail into the goal would seriously understate how soft this interview was. By the end, the prince was dictating the tone and direction of the chat so much, he actually raised his hand imperiously and barked, Hang on. Among the elliptical, weaponized woo-woo that Bradby let pass were statements such as, Silence only allows the abuser to abuse. Andrew Neal would have bitten his throat out. Who's the abuser? What does he mean by abuse? Is he calling the royal family abusers just because they don't like his wife? Because... At the heart of this lie is a simple, boring truth. The royals just didn't like Harry's wife. 
the effect of the whole past week has been like watching one enormous, sustained, high-gloss, high-intensity, fully televised gaslighting. And Camilla Long, of course, has picked up on, of course, the natural dislike for Harry's wife because of her behaviour, but also, although she doesn't express it this way, the fact that Harry is her lieutenant, that he's been trotted out on a self-destructive crusade to make her look good, to be supportive towards her, to talk about their truth, when actually there's been repeated lies provided. Long continues. And where, might you ask, was the Duchess? Gently guiding the camera with a manicured hand? Harry's wife's input in all this was instantly detectable, especially if you watch more than one interview. Who had decided, for example, that Harry would compare Diana's death to a bicycle chain in as many interviews as he could? No sane PR, that's for sure. And long identifying, as many of us have done, the hand of Harry's wife in these interviews alongside the bug, controlling her intimate partner primary source. But you couldn't just see a woman who thinks archetyped is a real world, thinking it was the perfect me metaphor, lofty and mysterious, yet something everyone could understand. People love bicycles, right? Wrong. The interviews were filled with stuff like this, prepared sound bites that initially made sense, but on closer inspection became mad, pistachio-scented twaddle. To put it another way, as I would observe, it's word salad and Harry repeatedly regurgitates it on behalf of his handler. In his more relaxed interview with Anderson Cooper, the smoothie US news anchor, how far this former war correspondent has fallen, we learnt yet again that the family motto was never explain, never complain. Was it, though? Is that something the royals actually say of themselves, or something the media says they say? In recent work, weeks, I've felt more inclined to defend Harry. He has spoken eloquently on his childhood and the death of his mother. But oof, on telly, he's unlikable, diffident and uncompromising, even when bathed in glossy CBS lighting. His thoughts aren't offered with tentativeness, humility or charm, as Diana might have done. They are handed down with such condescending military vigour, you think, who does he think he is? The king? But you can't have a ghostwriter for being on television. It never lies. Any decent interviewer would have sensed his rage issues. He even talks in a scuffly, I'm barely containing myself Gordon Ramsay way, and romped home with a volcanic swoop. Instead, they chose to trot out a series of obviously set up questions and answers. At one point, Cooper told us that the royal family was like Game of Thrones without dragons. I don't watch Game of Thrones, but there's definitely dragons, Harry replied. Help. Camilla along there with a scathing analysis of Harry and his recent interviews, and moreover identifying, of course, that unlike the book, on television, there is no ghostwriter, and the television doesn't lie, and it shows very clearly how he comes across, and of course, the continued involvement of Harry's wife. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.